I am Frank Amato, the editor at, or the publisher of Salmon Trout Steelheader and founder back in 1967. It's 50 years old now and for all that period of time we've been mainly interested in obviously salmon, trout, and steelhead. We fought for uh, wild fish, we fought for hatchery fish. I want to uh, share with you how steelhead and salmon are facing possible extinction in many rivers along the Pacific coast. And this graph demonstrates the increase in seal population from 1975 to 2015. Incredible increase from 292 orcas to 644, 210,000 harbor seals to 355,000, 5,900 California sea lions, the ones you see in Astoria and up in Oregon City, to 47,000. So in 50 years or 40 years, from 5,900 California sea lions to 47,000. Stellar seals, not such a big increase, 74,000 to 78,000, but these seals are generally in northern British Columbia and, and in Alaska and have plenty of fish to eat. What's happened as these, what allowed these seals to increase in uh, in numbers and it's simply a matter of having salmon smolts and salmon adults in the Pacific from California to Alaska having millions of these to eat and if we just take a look at one species Chinook and this is based on a study that federal government funded and it came out about November 22nd and it was published in I think it's Science Magazine but in 1975 the population of salmon of Chinook that were eaten by seals was five million. Now in 19, in 2015, 35 years later, 45 years later, it's up to 31 million. So they've increased their, their numbers as far as eaten fish from five million to 31 million. Maybe 600% increase, 6,000%. I don't know what, but it's incredible. You almost can't get it on a graph, it's so great. And in the way of poundage of these same Chinook salmon, the seals have, and orcas have increased from their poundage of eaten fish flesh per year from 7,000 tons to 17,000 tons. Now we're only talking about Chinook salmon here. If they had statistics for steelhead, that are also out there with the Chinook and also coho, several other species of Chinook, this figure would probably be over a hundred million and this figure would probably be double what it is, maybe 35,000 tons annually consumed by seals. Back when the Marine Mammal Protection Act went into effect, obviously it went into effect to save, to increase the numbers of seals, sea lions and orcas. Well, as you saw by, as you saw from this statistic, the California sea lions, 5,900 to 47,000. Harbor seals, which are generally in uh, Puget Sound and the estuaries of coastal streams, eating mainly smaller Chinook, smolt and things like, of that nature, increased from 210,000 to 355,000. In addition to all of this incredible increase in pinnipeds, there's been a remarkable increase in birds that are predating on, on juvenile fish particularly. And that's, all of these things are leading to the extinction of steelhead and salmon on the Pacific coast. Not only wild fish, but really hatchery fish as well. Uh, I'm, gonna, I, I'm going to introduce to you the current Executive Director of the Association of Northwest Sealheaders. Again, fighting for fish and for sport fishermen since the early 1960s when it was organized in Portland. Uh, Bob Rees is uh, a graduate of the same high school that I attended in Portland, Central Catholic. So with that, I'll give him a handshake and wish him the best. Thank you. <laughs>
Hey, Bob. Hi. Uh, first of all, um, Frank, uh, you know, I grew up reading your publication. Um, I read the editorials, um, the information in the magazine, and your dedication to the recovery of uh, salmon and steelhead populations, as well as your own advocacy for um, sport fishermen throughout the Pacific Northwest is admirable. And the steelheaders have always appreciated what, what you've done on behalf of our community. So thank you for that. Our organization um, collectively contributes around 30,000 volunteer hours a year to the betterment of fish and wildlife resources. We, as you have noticed, and, and there's nobody better to point this out, the drastic decline of salmon and steelhead populations in the state of Oregon and throughout the Pacific Northwest. We have uh, uh, undertaken an incredible initiative that we're calling the Quest for 100K. It's to bring back, specifically, 100,000 Spring Chinook back to the Willamette River Basin. Of course, there are many factors that are affecting the decline of salmon and, and steelhead species in the basin. But the number one priority, as you've um, gracefully outlined with your graphics, is this incredible success story of the Marine Mammal Protection Act. That success story um, is uh, unintended. Um, it is more than achieved its objective. And it is now, because of uh, the imbalance that happens, salmon and steelhead populations are continuing to decline because of the loss of habitat because of the loss of river function, and uh, um, obviously because of the per incredible predation rates that we're experiencing uh, through other uh, animal population explosions. Uh, and, th and these numbers are dramatic. To see these, these kind of dramatic increases that have happened with the pinniped populations, there is no um, natural predator that's effective at culling these populations of marine mammals. It used to be that humans, as well as orcas and sharks, have uh, been able to keep them in check. Um, that's not the case anymore. Uh, probably the greatest human equation, humans, is now removed from that equation because of protections that are under the Marine Mammal Protection Act. So what's happened is we're seeing this incredible growth of this population of predators to the point where, you know, like anglers, they are most opportunistic. They take advantage of the easiest place that they can intercept these fish, this food source. And as, as those populations concentrate around places like Bonneville Dam and Willamette Falls, and these mammals have been actually uh, seen predating on fish inside of the fish ladders. So not only are they consuming fish inside the most drastic pinch point throughout the river system, uh, they're taking advantage of that. Uh, but they're also impeding passage, uh, causing these fish to slow down their migration, making them more susceptible to freshwater factors such as uh, warm water diseases. Uh, and, and as you've also identified, uh, and what's largely unaccounted for, are the, uh, the harbor seal um, predation rates on the juvenile out-migrating uh, uh, smolts. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of work to do. Uh, one of the key priorities in the quest for 100K is to address, prioritize what some of the biggest pinch points are at that time. And predation is the number one priority for the steelheaders to take advantage, uh, to, to take into account the predation rates that exist at Willamette Falls. And we're seeing the expansion of these populations of mammals into the Clackamas and the Sandy Rivers. Uh, st um, California sea lions were witnessed at the mouth of Eagle Creek last year. So again, as more and more pressure gets put on the opportunistic areas, and the fact that steelhead last year was at nearly an all-time low at Willamette Falls, so it couldn't actually support the number of mammals that were predating at Willamette Falls. So those mammals are moving into the tributaries such as the Clackamas. It's only a matter of time before they're witnessed at the base of River Mill Dam and again constraining the passage and the, the spawning capabilities of the population. Well Bob, you know I've been fishing rivers along the coast of Oregon as well in BC and California for uh, many many years, 60, 70 years almost, and I have noticed uh, particularly in the estuaries and in lower stretches of coastal streams the seals and also of course on the Columbia tremendous amounts of sea lions and uh, yeah, it's a disaster and it really, I mean, the Marine Mammal Protection Act, as you say, 
has been very successful, but the problem that, that's a disaster is that it's been way too successful. And in my opinion, government agencies haven't been active enough to overlook what's going on. I think back in the 70s and the 80s, before we had all of this technology, uh, papers would be presented and more people read scientific papers. Now that we've got uh, the, the web, there's so many papers being presented, so many millions and billions of dollars worth of studies and papers and presentations that the average fisherman who mainly fishes so that he can go and forget about problems, uh, he's been kind of forgotten or ignored this seal, this seal and or the salmon steelhead potential extinction. And so we should really, in my estimation, be up in arms and uh, attempting to get our elected government officials as well as our bureaucrats in state fish and game departments to act on this. Uh, this information about the population of sea lions just came out about two months ago and I've hardly heard anything in the press about it. Nothing to my knowledge in the Oregonian, the Washington Post out of Washington DC had something about it but my god you know fishermen you've got to speak up so all great points Frank um, you know and uh, I can assure you that um, the Association of Northwest Steelheaders is making this a top priority uh, in our work plan um, historically anglers have shied away from getting political but it's clear uh, as we face extinction for Willamette Basin steelhead that it's time to get political. And some of our Oregon uh, delegation, uh, actually within the Pacific Northwest, are understanding the, um, the gravity of the situation. And they're taking appropriate steps to bring together the stakeholders to ensure that we have proper legislation that addresses the crisis at issue. Um, Back when uh, uh, sea lions started showing up at Willamette Falls, we had a robust run of around 15,000 Upper Willamette Basin steelhead. It was actually at one point considered for delisting under ESA. Currently, last year, we had uh, just five, a little over five, just under 600 wild adults pass over to Willamette Falls. Total disaster. Total disaster. And this year, in 2017, it looks to be the same. Uh, so what scientists would agree is that if we have three consecutive years of less than 100 fish past Willamette Falls, it is considered an extinct population. So this initiative, particularly the current legislation that is navigating its way through Congress, is to prevent the extinction of wild steelhead in the upper Willamette Basin. That is what's driving this legislation. That is what the legislators see as the crisis and they want to address. Um, but nonetheless, if we as anglers don't get together and uh, collectively lobby our uh, federal legislators in particular, this um, legislation has a, a high probability of stalling in Congress. And we don't have that many years to address it. So what's critically important for our community is that you remain engaged. Uh, yesterday on January 14th, we attended a town hall with Senator Ron Wyden. He was, uh, has been, even before yesterday's town hall, quite receptive to the crisis that we have at hand. Um, but we have to continue to engage both the House members and the other senator, Senator Merkley, and uh, help them understand just what a crisis this is. So people can do that, of course by being members of the Association of Northwest Steelheaders. We also have a petition on our website, uh, www.nwsteelheaders.org. Sign the petition. We can uh, further um, uh, coordinate and organize our community, get them in front of the proper people to have these conversations with and do something about it. Because as we have seen through history, Particularly what's driving this conversation is the functional extinction of wild steelhead in the um, Lake Washington area at Ballard Locks. Everybody knows the story about what happened at Ballard Locks. There were a few sea lions that literally wiped that population off the face of this earth. The same scenario is setting itself up at Willamette Falls. It's setting itself up at Bonneville Dam. We need to do something about it and we need to do something about it right away.
Well, Bob, I really appreciate, appreciate the effort that the Northwest Seal Hunters are making. And I know that over all the years of their existence, they've always been inadequately funded. They've probably done the most good per dollar invested of any conservation group that I've ever seen. And I was on the National Board of Directors of Trout Unlimited and as well as being on board of directors of a couple of other organizations. And for the, for the action or for the bang for the buck, the best place to invest is the Association of Northwest Steelheaders. Fishermen go fishing, but they forget that there's somebody behind what they're fishing for. There's nature, of course, but there's also bureaucracy, and we've got to cut through the bureaucracy so that we can get good management so that our steelhead won't be driven to extinction as well as our salmon. And it's going to happen unless you do something about it. Thanks for those kind words, Frank. And, and of course, um, they're echoed throughout our association. Um, and, and that is really our um, portion of this campaign to recover these fish in the quest for 100K. Uh, that's what the seal hunters do best. There is so much information out there. As you've said, it's, there's study after study after study that tell how to recover these fish. Billions of dollars have gone into studying how to re recover these fish. What the Association of Northwest Steel Hunters does best is we advocate. We move the political needle on these issues that matter the most. Uh, again, I'll reiterate that uh, 30,000 volunteer hours a year is what members of the Association of Northwest Steelheaders contribute to the betterment of our fish and wildlife. We, our, our entire tension, intention is to move the political will to show the crisis we have at hand to ensure, you know, and of course everybody's on board, you know, fishing guides are, the fishing community is, the scientists are, they're all in one, uh, headed in the same direction, but this um, this particular campaign has to get all Oregonians involved, all folks from the Pacific Northwest that already know the crisis is at hand. It's not that we need more science, it's that we need more advocacy, and that's precisely what our role as sport anglers and members of the Association of Northwest Steelheaders intends to do. Wonderful. Well, Bob, I'd like to thank you for everything you're doing and everything that Northwest Steel Hunters are doing. And like I say, you know, I've been a member since the mid-60s, and I met a bunch of guys that were longshoremen. They were working men. Uh, Bill Luce, uh, Larry Cassidy, business owner. Uh, these guys were the greatest guys, and they absolutely loved steelhead and salmon and trout to the point that they were willing to start an organization to protect them and those guys were just all fantastic and there are saints and uh, hopefully they will help us along the way too wherever they are and, and that's absolutely right those pioneers they don't uh, get their due credit they're the ones that that started the incredible base that currently exists at uh, at the association northwest deal headers we are going to keep looking for those leaders. We have them in our organization now. We've had them throughout history, throughout our um, 57 years of history. That's, right. uh, that's, that's what moves okay. mountains. Um, and uh, that's again, right. the, the board of directors and the members of the association are what fuels change. So, Well, you know, to give you an example, I asked Bill Lush when he was president of Northwest Steel Letters in 1972, if he would ask and represent the Northwest Steelheaders at a hearing on trout management on the Deschutes River. At that time, a bunch of uh, federation clubs, federation of fly fishermen clubs and others wanted to get protective status for wild trout on the Deschutes. But the commissioners were afraid that, well, if it was coming, the request was coming from the elite, elitist fly fishermen, quote unquote, that uh, they might get fired down by the public if they voted in favor of wild fish management. So knowing this, I asked Bill Luce if he would present the argument for the Northwest Steel Hunters. And Bill Luce at the time was a president of the Longshoremen's Club. And it's this wonderful, tough guy who wrote a book called uh, uh, Drift Fishing for Steelhead. I've got it. <laughs> Great public speaker. And so Bill Luce, walked in front, I was there, Bill Lush addressed the commissioners 
and they all agreed and we won it on just almost a unanimous vote. And that changed the trout management in the state of Oregon. And I kind of attribute it to Bill Lush and the influence and the dedication of the Northwest Steel Hunters at that time. And Oregon, anybody who's caught a trout in Oregon has benefited from what the Northwest Steel Hunters did at that meeting in 1972. It was the happiest day almost of my life, other than uh, maybe my wife and a couple of kids. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. So, uh, Frank's, uh, Frank, thanks for having me over to your wonderful house. And um, I can't express enough um, about uh, the role that Salmon Trout Steelheaders has played in the, the history of ad advocacy for Pacific Northwest fishermen. Uh, you guys are the, the medium that gets the information out there that also helps rally the crowd into action. Uh, and we, we're, we're looking forward to another 50 years of Salmon Trout Steelheader to be part of our community. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you.